supposed to do it, Dad. They want us to do it. I don't way. know that way. Why would they change math? Uh, math is math. Okay, math Dad. is math. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, good, thanks. Um, all right, let's start off with a flashback from a couple of previous lessons. We're going to integrate x squared plus 6x divided by x squared plus 6x plus 13. Uh, if you've watched my earlier videos on integration, you might want to pause this and have a go before I run through it. Okay, so the method we're going to use for this question is a combination of splitting the numerator and completing the square. So because I can already see we have an x squared plus 6x on top and bottom, uh, smart move is to add and subtract 13 from the top of the fraction like this. Okay, now we're going to split this apart into two fractions where on one fraction the numerator is x squared plus 6x plus 13 and for the second fraction or second integral we're going to have 13 on the top which looks like this. Okay, so splitting it apart with the minus in the middle and now just creating two uh, integrals. Alright, conveniently the first one uh, is going to turn into the integral of 1 which is nice and easy. Now for the second one we're going to handle this by completing the square on the bottom to turn this into a function that we can use uh, inverse tan integration. So let's have a look at that. So we have the integral of 1, take away, I'm going to put the 13 at the front to not worry about it for now. On the bottom, I'm going to write 13 as 9 plus 4 because x squared plus 6x plus 9 is of course a perfect square and can be factorized as x plus 3 all squared. Now for integrating using arctan, we need x squared plus a squared with a on the top. So because I have a 4 here, I'm going to put a 2 on the top, which means I need to have a half at the front of the integral so I keep the balance and I've only multiplied by 1. Okay, now we can integrate. So 1 is going to turn into x. We're going to have 13 over 2 times uh, tan inverse of x plus 3 and uh, divided by 2, of course. And don't forget your plus c for your constant integration. And there is your correct answer. So well done if you got the same thing uh, before me. Okay, today we are looking at uh, integrating trigonometric powers. So we're looking at uh, how in extension 1, you learned how to integrate cos squared and sine squared. In uh, extension 2, we look at cos cubed, sine cubed, powers of 4, and also powers of 10. So heaps of fun. Uh, a lot of tricks that you need to sort of recognize because sometimes these questions are a bit hard to know where to start unless you've really done the work and done the study, like I have. All right, so here is our first one. We are going to start off by looking at uh, powers of sine or cos being multiplied by just sine or just cos. Okay, so uh, what we recognize here in this first one is that we have a function of sine, we have sine cubed, and this is being multiplied by cos. So what we can do here is tidy this up really quickly if we make a clever substitution. So if you watched my last video on substitutions, um, hopefully you recognize that the clever move here is to let u equal to sine x. This gives us that du on dx is equal to cos x, and if we rearrange this by swapping these two terms, we get that, um, no I don't, I'm going to multiply the dx across. So we get du equals cos x dx, which is great because in our integral we have cos x dx. So it's all going to tidy up really nicely. We're going to have sine cubed turning into u cubed, and the cos x dx is turning into a du. So now we have a super basic integral. We're just going to raise the power and then divide by 4 and add your c, and now chuck back in that u is actually equal to sine x, and there is our evaluated integral nice and easy. Okay, so when you have a power of sine or a power of cos multiplied by its derivative, you just want to substitute the sine or cos and it pops out really conveniently. Similar over here, we have a power of cos being multiplied by sine. So the smart move is to let u equal to cos x. This gives us that du on dx is of course equal to negative sine x. So then du is negative sine x. So when we substitute du into our integral, we have a sine x dx, and we just need to put a negative out the front because there's a negative in our substitution. Okay, putting that all in, we get the integral, uh, negative integral of u to the power of 9 du. And now once again, straightforward integration, raising to a power of 10, dividing by 10, adding a constant, and then resubstituting that u is equal to cos x, and then we get this as our final answer. Okay, so this concept of having a function multiplied by its derivative is going to be really important for a lot of examples today. So keep it in the back of your mind. Okay, on to our next one. This comes from the 2011 HSC. So you do see questions like these every few years. We have the integral of cos cubed dx. Okay, so our goal for this question is similar to the last couple of, exa couple of examples. We're trying to find a function of cos or sine that's multiplied by cos or sine so we can make a substitution. Here's how we're going to handle this one. We're going to split cos cubed into cos times cos squared. Okay, the reason we did that is because we can use our Pythagorean identity here 
using the fact that one, oh, sorry, that sine squared plus cos squared is equal to one. This gives us that cos squared can be written as one minus sine squared. So hopefully that's familiar for you. And now looking at this, what we have is a function of sine multiplied by cos. So again, we can say, well, it's gonna be smart to let u equal to sine x because then du is gonna be equal to cos x dx, which is right here, cos x dx. Okay, so substituting in our values, we're gonna change the cos x dx to a du, and we're gonna change one minus sine squared to one minus u squared. And now it's nice and easy. We're gonna integrate the one into a u. u squared is gonna turn into u cubed on three. Don't forget your plus c. And now we chuck back in that u is of course equal to sine x, and then we get our evaluated integral, sine x take away a third of sine cubed plus c. All right, wasn't that fun? Maths is beautiful. Let's go on to the next one. We're now looking at a power of four. We have the integral of sine to the power of four dx. So our approach when compared to the power of three is a bit different and it really relies on our knowledge of the extension one course. So the way we're gonna handle this is we are going to write sine to the four x as sine squared squared. The reason we are doing this is because we have an expression for sine squared uh, from the extension one syllabus um, that allows us to integrate. So hopefully you've already seen this in extension one and you know that sine squared can be written as a half of one minus cos two x. If you ever forget that, that information is on your reference sheet, but um, yeah, it should be part of your content knowledge if you've already done extension one integration. What we're now going to do is we're going to square this. So the half is gonna turn into a quarter and we're going to expand the bracket as one minus cos two x all squared. So half squared is a quarter, put that out the front. Now we have one squared, we're gonna multiply these together and double it, and then we have cos 2x squared on the end. Okay, now it looks like we've made it um, a lot messier, but we know how to integrate one, we know how to integrate cos 2x, and we know how to integrate cos squared 2x from the extension one course again. So we're going to split this apart into two integrals. First one is one minus two cos 2x, and the other one is the cos squared. Don't forget the quarter out the front is gonna be a part of both integrals when you split it up. Okay, so now to integrate cos squared 2x, we again use our substitution from the formula sheet, which is gonna be um, a half of one plus cos of double the angle. So because we had cos squared 2x, we've got cos 4x here. There is a half here, but I've just put it out the front with the quarter, which has turned it into an eighth. Okay, so I've just done this again, except when it's cos squared, you have a plus in the middle and it's double the angle. So because we had 2x, it's 4x. I hope that's clear. Okay, now we can just uh, dig in and do some integration. So our one turns into an x, our cos 2x integrates into a sine 2x, and then we divide by two because that's the derivative of the angle. One turns into x and cos 4x turns into a quarter sine 4x. We've got the one eight here, we've got the one quarter here and the plus c on the end. Now we just expand it all out and then tidy it all up. And our final answer looks like one thirty second of sine 4x take away a quarter sine 2x plus 3x over eight plus c. Okay, so if we're integrating sine squ uh, sorry, sine to the four or cos to the power of four, we're gonna write it as sine squared squared or cos squared squared, apply integration, and it gets a bit messy, but it is doable. Okay, onto our next one. We're now looking at the integral of tan cubed. So our approach to this is gonna be pretty similar to the, um, to the sine cubed example. Uh, we're trying to write this in terms of a function multiplied by its derivative. So we're splitting it up again into tan x times tan squared x. And now using our knowledge of our identities from the advanced course, we hopefully know that one plus tan squared is equal to sec squared. If we rearrange that, we get that tan squared is equal to sec squared minus one. Okay, this is looking better because the derivative of tan is sec squared. So we can split this apart into two integrals and one of them is gonna have tan x sec squared. So it's in a good position for a substitution. So expanding it out and splitting it apart into two integrals, we got tan x sec squared and we got tan x on the end. So like I said, the way we can uh, handle this first integral is by making a substitution. So we're gonna let tan x equal to u because the derivative of tan x is sec squared dx, which is right here. So it's gonna tidy up super nicely. Now the trick for integrating the second fraction, integrating tan, is to write this as a fraction. We of course know that tan can be written as sine over cos. So our first integral, when we make our substitution, we get u du, and I'm writing tan x as sine over cos. The reason I'm writing it in this way is because it's a bit more clear now that we have a fraction where the top of the fraction is almost the derivative of the bottom 
because the derivative of cos x is negative sine x, which is right here. When the top is the derivative of the bottom, of course, we can use a natural logarithm to integrate this. So that's what we'll do now. So we're gonna put the negative up top. So we have the derivative on top of the bottom of the function. And so this is now uh, the natural log of the bottom of the fraction, which is cos x with your absolute values. Plus you see our u turned into a u squared over two. So now we just back substitute that u was in fact 10x. And then we have a half tan squared plus natural log of cos x plus c. So a couple of tricks there, knowing how to split it up and also knowing how to integrate tan x are both really useful. So that's what the point of this question was, I guess. Okay, now stepping it up one power, we are looking at tan to the power of four, which is actually, I think, even easier than tan to the power of three if you know the correct steps. So let's run through them now. What we're going to do is express this as tan squared times tan squared, except again, like with the last example, we are going to write tan squared as sec squared minus one using our rearranged identity. Okay, now we're going to split these apart once again. So we have tan squared times sec squared here, because again, we have a function of tan multiplied by the derivative of tan. So it's going to be a convenient substitution. On the end, we have tan squared, which again, there's a trick to integrating this, um, which we'll look at in a second. So for the first integral, like I said, we're going to substitute u equal to tan x because the derivative of u is equal to sec squared dx, right there, how convenient. So this first integral is going to turn into u squared du. Now for tan squared, we are going to use our identity to use the fact that um, tan squared, once again, is equal to sec squared minus one. The reason we're writing tan squared as sec squared minus one is because we know how to integrate sec squared, that just integrates to tan and we know how to integrate to one. Okay, so if you wanna integrate tan, you use a, uh, a natural logarithm, sorry, writing as a fraction. If you wanna integrate tan squared, you write it as sec squared minus one. So useful tips. All right, let's do some calculus. So u, uh, sorry, u squared turns into u cubed over three. Substituting the fact that u is equal to tan x gets us here. Sec squared turns into tan, and then the minus one turns into a minus x, but gets multiplied by the negative to turn into a positive x. Plus your constant, and there is our final answer. So again, using our powers, using our um, identities, so you really need to know all your bits and pieces of trigonometry if you wanna make it through these questions uh, in a logical way. Okay, up to uh, what is our last example, I think. We have cos squared multiplied by sine cubed dx. Okay, so if one of these was just a cos or just a sine without a power, it'd be nice and easy, just like in the first example. So that's kind of our goal. We're going to try and turn this into a function of cos or sine being multiplied by just cos to the one or sine to the one. So for this one, we're going to write our sine, uh, sine cubed, sorry, as sine squared times sine. Okay, and then we're going to use the fact that our rearranged identity is that sine squared is equal to one minus cos squared. Okay, again, it looks like I've made this heaps messy, but what we now have is a function of cos with powers, doesn't matter, multiplied by just sine to the power of one. This is great news. When you see this, now we can make the substitution u equal to cos x, and because the derivative of cos x is kind of sine x dx, it's all gonna work out really, really nicely. So we have let u equal to cos x, the derivative of u is equal to negative sine x. So we can just put a negative at the front of our integral and we have negative sine x and we are good to go. So negative at the front, now we have u squared times one minus u squared du. So now we just have powers of u. We can expand this out. Um, while I'm doing that, I may as well bring the negative inside just to make things look a little bit simpler, but you don't have to do that. So here is our expansion with the negative inside. Now we're just going to raise the powers and divide by the new powers add your constant and then back substitute that u is of course equal to cos x and this is our final answer. So there you go, lots of tricks to know. Every question is kind of a different approach but they all rely on um, knowledge of how to make a substitution in the correct way and knowledge of trigonometric identities. So yeah, I found these pretty challenging at first. It took me a while to get confident with these and it might be the same for you. So stick in there boys and girls, you can do it. All right, that's it for uh, this video lesson. Here are some recommended exercises from Howard Maths if you want some more practice. And um, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.